Hello, hi guys, my name is NJ and welcome back to another episode of Vault Hunters. Now in today's episode, we are going to be super busy. I have a few things that I want to do. I have a few things that I want to make and I have a few things I want to run vault wise because I want to test some stuff out. We also want to add a bit more to the base. So I need to unlock something to be able to do that. And the research I'm actually looking to unlock is the crate mod. As you can see though, it has already been unlocked because Fuzzy, myself and Ozone went in on a live stream. I think Fuzzy was streaming and the three of us went in on crate and we managed to get it unlocked. So we actually already have crate. This is what I was looking forward to unlocking. So we could kind of not finish so much, finish the base off, but finish something that could connect to the base. And I think it's something I talked about in a previous episode. And what I'm referring to is our glorious bridge that we built in the last episode. This connects obviously the island to the blimp itself and it looks absolutely glorious. But as I did say, we wanted to get crate so we could actually finish off. So what we're going to be using crate for is we're just going to use a couple of simple little crate wheels to generate enough power so we can actually get these sort of turbines rotating. That's the idea anyway. I'm not quite sure how we'll pull it off, you know, with underneath and stuff, but we'll work it out. You know, it's going to look cool if we can pull it off. And it actually then adds a whole different sort of layer to our base, makes it come alive. You know how much I love things in Minecraft coming alive. So that's the kind of plan. Let's um, find a space for a wheel and start getting things connected up. Right, we're starting to get things connected up. As you can see, we're located on the island just in front of the blimp. If we just pop down this hole here, you can see we now have rotational power. I have a simple kind of water wheel set up with water pouring into it. It's got a little bit of rotational power going in this large cog wheel, which goes, connects to the small cog wheel, which just generates a little bit more power. Now there is ways you can speed this up. You can have more cog wheels or other things, but we don't need much power. We just need it to be turning because it's not actually going to be generating electricity for us or power for us that we're going to be using. We're just using it as a decorative block. So we've got the start. I now need to dig to the bridge because we need to connect things up there, which has now been done. We now have rotational power at the bridge, which is actually now starting to look really cool. So now we can get connected up for our propellers and stuff. And yeah, I think this is probably going to work quite well. The only issue I'm facing right now is um, <laughs> void working with propellers, working under the bridge. It's going to be a bit of a pain. So I think we should try and help ourselves and there's something I know that we can craft that will definitely help us. And what I'm referring to is this, the angel expertise. Now with this unlock, because I have actually taken this, we can actually craft ourselves what's known as an angel block. These things can be really expensive and I was waiting to craft this because in the previous update, before update 13, you needed two phoenix feathers and they were super difficult to find or super difficult to get because they didn't always pop up. And yeah, it was just a pain, but they have now changed the crafting recipe. So we can now craft this a little bit easier. But as I say, it doesn't make it any less expensive. Yeah, that's that's two Echo Pogs and four Black Chromatic Steel. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have the stuff, but that's very expensive. But it's going to be worth it. Let's craft ourselves an Angel Block. Right, I've now got all the stuff. Let's craft our Angel Block for the season. Awesome. Now I can hear somebody asking, what does this block do? Well, I will show you. Now, because I have the Angel Expertise unlocked, and I also have the Angel Block unlocked, if I pop this down on the ground, you can see it doesn't really do anything to begin with but it is actually doing something secretly. For those of you who know, you know. For those of you who don't, you're about to find out. Because what this block actually does is it gives you creative flight. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty cool. That's why it's probably so expensive because now I can just fly around. There is a limit to the distance. I think it's 60 blocks. You can travel before then it starts wearing off and you'll start falling to the ground. But the reason I, as I say, wanted to wait was because of the Phoenix flowers. Now we have this. I can do all the outside stuff that I couldn't do. Well, I could do before, but it was really difficult but this is going to make things a hundred times easier. And yep, it is making my life so much easier. You can see I have started to build the sort of foundation that is going to be what our propellers are going to be based on. We see we've got the shaft coming out there where we had before. It is now into a gearbox. Then we've got two vertical gearboxes on each side because you can just transfer the power up. Then we have the shafts going into another vertical gearbox. And then we just need to connect them. I haven't done the whole thing, so I just want to test the first two to make sure this actually works. There's no reason why it shouldn't. But what you know, I like to test things first. Now, what we need to do first is we actually need to take glue and glue the middle section and the whole surround together. Because if I don't do that, it's probably not going to work. And the glue is exactly what it says on the tin. It is just glue. It's another really cool feature of Crate. So if I actually click here, and then if I think if I hold, is it hold the button. Oh, I can't remember how to do this. Um, there we go. There we go. There's a way out of it. That's that's what I wanted. Now, if I'm able to come across, you can actually glue kind of all that together like that. And if I do the exact same thing here, we can do this side like that. And if I do this to here, you can see from the surround that all this has now been glued together. 
Right, I think it's time we tested it. And the block I have in my hand is the thing that's gonna make it all possible, the mechanical bearing. This is something that we can connect to this box and it will actually just give it rotational power, so it'll actually start turning. You do get another one called the windmill bearing, which actually gives you proper power, but those are expensive and we don't need those. This is just a decorative thing, so this is gonna be easy for us. Right, if I connect this, this should start turning. Three, two, one. Oh. <laughs> Oh, guys, now that is cool. But do you know what's cooler than having one working? Having two working. Oh, guys, that looks so cool. Oh, this is everything I hoped it would be. Um, I'm in love. This is exactly how I wanted this bridge always to be. Okay, let's get the other four done and get the bridge complete. Are you ready for the big reveal? Are you ready for the big reveal? We have done it. It looks awesome. Yeah, this is kind of exactly what I was looking for when I, the thought first popped in my head all those months ago. This is looking so cool. I, as I say, I love when I can make bases and things come to life in Minecraft because in, you know, bog standard vanilla Minecraft, it can be very difficult, but we always kind of find a way. Of course, you know, we're playing Vault Hunters. It has the crate mod and a lot of other cool mods. And it's a lot easier to do. Create Mod is so, so cool. And this is kind of the stuff that Create Mod was created for. Just really cool builds. I really hope you guys like this. This is something I've been planning for a while. And I think it just makes it come to la you know, to life. It gives it purpose that the bridge isn't just hanging in there. It actually is floating because you've got the propellers and stuff holding it up. We're not finished. We're going to be using these on the blimp as well. We'll get propellers and a blimp. I'll get that done at some point. This was mainly what I wanted to do today and hence why I wanted to create. But... There is an issue with Crate it, I'm going to have to kind of solve before I start building anything else. And one of the main issues I'm going to have with Crate at present is this block right here, the Andersite block. I only have 376 Andersite at present, which isn't an awful lot, and Crate actually requires a lot of Andersite for a lot of different crafting recipes in Crate. But not only that, it also requires the chromatic iron as well, as well as the chromatic iron blocks. So you want to make casings, you need chromatic iron blocks. I only have 135. I know, I know you can find both of these in raw vaults, obviously, because we're playing kind of sky you know the sky pack but yeah it's a pain to do and i don't really want to have to run loads of raw vaults just to get chromatic iron and also get to and also get anderson i know we can find these in the vaults you know in the chromatic iron caves but you know trying to find those is a bit of a pain but there is a simpler way to obtain both and probably the simplest way to obtain both those items as well as zinc and copper because you need both of those to be mixed together to make brass which is also very important for crate is coming to the tool station and making ourselves a hammer. Now, probably not necessarily a chromatic hammer, but I do want to get one for the overworld. So we want to get vanilla immortality over 100%, because that means once we do that, the hammer isn't going to break in the overworld. So we can keep mining as long as we want. We want to make a hammer really big, so I'm probably going to go a melded hammer, because that'll give us enough capacity to put enough hammer jewels on it, enough mining jewels on it, because we want to get like mining speed on it. So we want to get a really quick hammer, because we want to be able to get through all the blocks, not just stone and andersite and you know gravel and things we want, we want to be able to go through everything including ores and then probably a couple of little things but we won't need much on it then i also maybe want to come down to the black chromatic steel one and actually make ourselves a new set because i have been using the volarite stuff we made a couple episodes back they're now level 43 i'm now level 70 so i think we're maybe due an upgrade on a hammer and another well we're going to go away from the pack so we're going to go to a hammer for the vault and we're also going to go maybe to a sickle or machete as well and get all our stuff upgraded but Let's get the hammer done for the overworld first because I want to try it out and try and get some crate goodiness and, you know, items and stuff saved up because I want, I want to really get into the crate mod. And this is what I've come up with. We have ourselves a black chromatic steel shatterer. Yes, I know we just said melded, but you know me, I can't help myself. I, know, I want a black chromatic steel one. You get the 50 extra capacity and it means I can do a little bit more with it. But what we got on it, we have 107% vanilla immortality with Axon. We got wooden affinity, we don't need it, but we have it on. We have another three hammer sized jewels on it. We have over 50 mining speed, shovel and picking, and a little bit of reach. We have 103 capacity left. So if we do need to have another hammer and jewel for any reason, or if we want to add more mining speed or maybe more reach, then we can do. So let's create this and we'll have ourselves our overworld steel shatterer. Oh, a pile of jewels. Oh, oh, that is nice. Oh, that is nice. Um, okay, let me enchant it, and then I, I really want to take this for a test drive. Right, I'm out in the wilderness somewhere, and I'm going to test this absolutely epic hammer. So if I click, oh, oh, this is good. This is so cool. It literally mines. Is that a nine by nine? Was that one, two, three, four, five? Yeah, nine by nine. So it mines a nine by nine area. 
Oh, it's so quick. What about like going straight down? That's probably really dangerous, but we're gonna try. Oh, look at that. Wow, this could get dangerous really, really quickly, but look at that. That's absolutely insane. This thing is literally going to eat the world. Hence why I've given it the name, The World Ender, because this thing is literally going to end the world if I mine in a fast speed in any direction. It's going to absolutely destroy the planet. Let's have a quick look to see how many blocks we just got from mining this little area. I mean, wow. Look at that, 810 cobblestone, 318 andersite just straight away, there's some coal, loads of raw copper, which obviously we're going to need, we need to get zinc though, so that's something we're going to have to find somewhere, uh, dirt and then the slabs as well, yeah, this is going to be epic, but we do need to find a better area than just this corner here, we're going to have to go down into the world and start mining, we can maybe pick up diamonds, we can get deep slate, and we can get loads and loads of andersite because we need it for create. But we're going to have to look for a decent place to actually mine down to deep slate level so we can actually mine away using our world ender because it's going to be absolutely insane. But I think I'm going to do that in between episodes. But you, you know, you've probably seen it. We're in the overworld and I am standing in a certain location that I've not showed you guys yet. And it has a lot of very big implications for, well, for the rest of my season. And this area is going to be very important to me for the rest of the season because this is actually the area we are going to be building the second part of our base. Yeah, as you can see, I have mapped out an area here. Code is just up on the hill. You can probably see these giant sort of sword tower just up there. And Fuzzy is directly there. So we're actually in, right in between Fuzzy and Code. Um, and you can see the guys have already bananaed me and I've not even moved in yet. But I've marked out with a pillar so people knew not to sort of build here. This is going to be sort of my area. And this warp plate just goes back to the Zindenberg. Now I can hear you guys kind of thinking, what are you going to be building here, Zinji? Well, that part, um, yeah, I'm going to be doing something completely different from what I would usually do. So typically in a season, you would build, you would kind of build a starter base, something to keep you going to the beginning of the season. Then you would build your bigger base. Well, we already have the Zindenberg, which is a star base slash big base, because it already is a kind of big base. And what we're going to be doing here in the sky, right in front of me in this area right here, is actually building like a warp portal, like a giant warp portal. I mean, you can, you can use saying that's kind of what you already kind of do. You do crazy stuff and futuristic stuff. I know, I can't help it. That's just like my sort of style. But we're going to be kind of half in the base, so it's not going to be a mega base. We're going to be using the Zindenberg, and we're also going to be using this area. So Zindenberg's going to be for like storage and, you know, building... Um, gear and stuff and this area over here is going to house certain things that I want to keep over here but also look really cool so we're going to have a giant portal in the sky as I say and coming through that portal if we can pull off just imagine there's a giant portal right here and coming through that sort of warp portal is going to be like a spacecraft that's kind of you know warping its way into the Minecraft world and then we're going to have maybe I don't want to give everything away we're going to have other things going on within the portal and the spacecraft and it should look really cool if I can you know, if I can pull it off. In that project, I am actually hoping to start very soon. I kind of want to get it done because it's the sort of thing you kind of put off and months go by and you do nothing to it. And then you, for four or five months, and you've not actually built your second part of your base. Yeah, so luckily we've only built half of a base, so we need to build the second half. Um, of course, I need to cut the materials. And I need to kind of get the idea down in my head exactly what I want to do because I'm not going to be doing any of this sort of stuff in creative. I don't, I did it a little bit last season so we could use the crate mod. I don't do that usually. I freehand almost all of my builds, so it will be completely freehand essentially. So I just need to get the idea solid in my head what I want to do, the blocks I want to use, and then we are going to get cracking on this amazing project. And that was one of the main reasons why we needed the crate mod unlocked and everything sort of set up for it. But that is to say, that's kind of going to have to wait for now. We do have our sort of super mega hammer sitting here so we know we can get all the resources we need for a crate. So that is not a problem right now. But we do have two other items that we need to build in this episode because I want to run a vault with our new hammer and our new sickle. But first, as you can see, we have five unidentified artifacts. I need to roll these. Right game, be cool. I don't want any duplicates here because I've had a couple of duplicates and it really, it really sucks when you get them. Right. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, there's already a double duplicate. Uh, I think that was a duplicate. Oh, this could be just the, the stage of duplicates. Okay, so it turns out from those five artifacts, we only got one new one. 
Well, that sucks. Right, it's time to get some new tools. And here's what we've got. We have our old tools right here. This is our Paxil and our Machete. These are the ones that we've been carrying us since level 43. Obviously, we're not level 70, so we've got a June upgrade. So I'm kind of glad we've done this because I've been kind of excited. I've been saving up a lot of jewels and I've been waiting to do this so I can present to you our new black chromatic steel shatterer, which is our hammer. I didn't do as much as the overworld one. I've just gone two hammer size. So I think it's like three overall. So it's just a seven by seven. I think that's going to be more than enough. It has almost 50% copiously. Has 60 mining speed, axe and shovel and picking. Wooden affinity for mining wooden chests, but item rarity. It has gilded randomly on it. I didn't choose that, but it has a wee bit. It has a wee bit of trap disarm. That is going to be a beast for mining ores and for wooden chests. The machete is attack. This is our old machete, so you can pause and have a look at the stats. Not too bad. This one's insane. 103% trap disarm, 27% mining speed, 32.9% item quantity, has a little bit more durability, almost 15% item rarity, 11 axe and gilded coin ornate, a little bit of reach, and then the Mort of the Vanilla or Mortality was added on just because it was on a random duo. These two are definitely going to carry us for a while, but it means... We're going to have to hang up the, the Volarite stuff in our little graveyard area. And here we are. It's time to say goodbye to the Machete and the Paxel. They have done us super well over time, but it's time they were hung up on the wall. Our level 43 Paxel, level 43 Machete, I bow to you because you have done us extremely well, but you're getting replaced by something much, much better. And no better way to figure out how good they actually are is actually by testing them in a vault. So let's open a vault, let's dive in, and let's give them a bash. And we have a scav. Oh, lovely. Oh, big guy, big guy, get out of here. Get out of here. This new frost build is absolutely right. This is going to be our first test. Let's see if we can do this. Oh, 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 wow. Um, yeah, well, that happened. Okay, I think the hammer's maybe too good. It mines whole sections, <laughs> but we'll see how we can use it as we're going. Once we hit like an ore POI, I think it's going to come in really, really clutch. Right, this is going to be our first good test of our new machete. Oh, that is glorious. Oh, that is glorious. Ah, give me that machete. Ah! Now, what I'm really looking for is an ore POI. Uh, one, because I need to get many boys for one of our bounties. But two, because I really want to test the hammer on ores. Because I think it's going to be pretty OP on ores. Ooh, gilded. I like good old gilded. Right, this might be an ore room. Yes, I think it is. Okay, let me get up there. And we can, actually, I'm going to go downstairs first. And then we can check our new hammer on the ores. And this is going to be pretty cool. Right, here we go. Ore POI. Let's see how this works. Oh, 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 oh my. Oh, that is amazing. I am definitely going to, need to look into junk managers soon because I'm going to have so many blocks. Right, here's another POI. Let's try this one. Oh, I can see why people love a hammer. Oh, I am sold. The hammer is awesome. Okay, I may have mentioned it once or twice, but I am in love with the hammer. It's absolutely awesome. Ooh, an all or shall I do it? It is Wendar, kill horde mobs, 93, 10 minutes. Okay, let's go. Okay, I got distracted. I found another ore room and I can't help myself with a new hammer. Ah! Okay, I might be hunting horde mobs, but I can't help myself. This mining ores is just insane. I'm absolutely loving it. Ooh. Right, I've almost got the Alexandrite and the Beniatite, so if I can find just one, maybe one other POI, an ore POI, I should get those two done. And I think one of them is a legendary, I think the Alexandrite's a legendary one, so, you know, could get a legendary bounty done in this vault. Curse incoming in three, two, one, and we got lethal. Uh, I mean, I suppose it could be worse. Get out of here. Get out of here. Okay, they do hit a bit harder. Okay, I'll definitely give them that. And we also, in that little exchange, got a Benio title done, so let's go. Right, if we can only find two more Alexandrite, we can get our legendary bounty done and claim all the goodies from that. Right, we're just over four minutes left. I'm going to start heading towards the exit, and if I can find... Um, oh, hello. If I can find what I'm looking for on the way, so... Ah! Um... 
ores to finish off my Alexandrite legendary bounty, then that would be great. But if we don't, we don't. I'm not, not too fussed. Oh, we got a bumble room. Um, I am probably just going to leave this room because <laughs> it's just not worth my time. Okay, I actually think this is an old room. We're right behind or beside the portal. So we're not too far away. Let's kind of go through this and see if we can get that last Alexandra ore that we need. Ooh, ores, right, let's see. Can we get Alexandra? I've fallen in my own hole. Yep, this is what happens when you have a hammer. I'm bounty complete, let's go! We did it! Nice, we're also just wrecking the POI, but that's fine. It's not as if we need it. Right, and with 136 left, I think it's probably a good time to head for the exit. Um, now that we've done everything we needed or wanted to do, let's go. You know what, we should actually maybe just quickly check. You know what, we know we don't have any blood bells because I never got any coins. So, no, we definitely haven't done it. Let's just get out. And one successful vault later. Here we go. 55,000 XP, that is not too bad, not too bad for not the greatest vault I've ever done. Man, that probably wasn't the best vault we've ever ran, but the purpose wasn't to complete the vault. The purpose was to test out our hammer and our machete, mortar hammer, and man, does that hammer destroy ores and or POIs for that as well. I was, um, yeah, I was really tearing the vault apart there. I cannot wait to use this more in the future. But I think that is where I'm going to end it for today. I've kind of run out of time for today. But if you have liked what you've seen, by all means hit the like button down below. And if you are new to the channel, then please consider subscribing. It lets me know that you guys enjoy my videos. Anyway, guys, that's it for me today. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, guys.